All right, guys, so I'm going to be starting with a Risen streamer hook. It's their streamer 300 in size 6. I'm also, I've got Vivas 6 Ot, the F08 color, which is like a light ish pink. You can tie these again in any color you want. So you want to start a little ways back from the eye, build up a thread base like this from right around there, and you can see where I'm where I'm at here, where I'm tying. I'm going to be tying this dumbbell in, or it's actually not a dumbbell; it's a bead chain eye. You can see I'm about a hook length or um, hook eye um, length, maybe. Um, Hook eye and a half length back. So you want to do the figure eights with the. And if you notice, I'm holding this tight. Um, this is a long shank hook, um, and so it will bend a little bit. I mean, it probably won't bend the hook necessarily, but it just kind of gives a little more um, support if you hold it up close, since we are using very long shanked hook. You want to make those about as even as possible. And then you want to bring this back to just back to the hook bend and back up. You're just creating a, a base on there. And you want to skip over to the front here. Right in, like um, not coming all the way up if you notice. Um, you want to keep that back a little bit. And then I'm going to cut some craft fur now. I'm not going to show you how I'm cutting craft fur here. I have shown many times before in other videos. Just check out some of my other videos with craft fur. Usually I'll kind of angle myself cutting it, yeah, but I'm not going to change camera angles here. Um, it's the same, same way. But you want about this much, okay? So not a ton. You don't need a ton. It's pretty sparse. You want to pull out the fuzzies like always. Now, this is super long, so I like grabbing just the, the tips of it and pulling out the extra long tips and replacing them back so they're not extending out much, much further like that. Um, you can see you've got now, a, a, I just cut that off to make it more flush. It's easier to manage. And then wet your fingers, makes it easier to get this tied in, okay? And then you want this to extend out. You can see it's not much past the back end, maybe three quarters of a hook shank length because we're using a, a long um, shanked hook. Um, usually it would be about one hole, but um, three quarters, right about there. Take that measurement. And then as you can see, I'm, I'm putting it on the side over here. I've got it angled on the side while I tie this in. Um, so that way, when it comes in, if you had it right in the center, it would rotate, as you can see, all the way around the hook and then be on the side of the hook. So you want to kind of angle it like so, and it'll automatically rotate to the right angle. Okay. And then after making a couple wraps there, come forward. That way, that lays down and it's out of your way. And then trim this off somewhat close. You know, close enough where you're not going to cover the hook eye. And then I come back up and just run right through that. And then go back. Okay, these are tied in a little differently than I usually do with. Um, the craft fur just acts a little different than a uh, bucktail, so, um, you know, you got to do things a little different, so that's that's how I do that. And then go ahead and spiral wrap all the way down. doesn't matter if you've got these shorter hairs sticking out. I mean, it's supposed to be kind of a messy fly. Make a couple wraps at the back, and then come up to the front. 
Um, and you could always trim those off if they bother you. Okay, but you stay right behind the, the eyes. If you notice, I'm, I haven't skipped over to the, um, in between the eyes and the um, hook eye. Then you want, this is Flashaboo Mirage. Two strands is good enough. Could do three if you want. Make it how you want if you want it more flashy. And then I wet these two and it kind of brings them together. As you notice, they kind of almost act like one strand. They'll open up once they dry. And then you want this to extend out right about where the end of the tail is. And see, I'm tying it in here. Usually it would be at right at the, the top, but um, the way that these uh, flash of boot, or I'm sorry, um, craft fur uh, clousers work is kind of works out better at that spot. So, all right, so cut that off about the same length as the, as the other. And then, then bring up right behind the, the eyes there. So now we're gonna get a little more craft fur here, about the same amount. Then when we tie this in, do the same thing. We're, well, first we're ex making sure it is about the same length as the tail. And then we tie it in kind of an, on an angle. And right in front of those eyes. And you can see how that twists that around to be perfectly on top, see? And then, because this can get in the way, I come over and make two wraps like that to keep that this part out of the way while I trim, because I've trimmed that section before and it sucks, because then you're losing, <laughs> losing part of your, your body there. And then you can unwrap, as you can see. Now you've got the, the clouser. Um, shape and look all right clean up that head doesn't have to be perfect go ahead and whip finish i'm doing quite a few turns of the whip finish cut that off bring this out stroke it back see if it's good and even which this one is and then I like to cement the head. You can use head cement. I'm going to be using Solarez Bone Dry today just because it does a couple things, and you'll see. Um, now, I didn't put super glue on the eyes, but I don't really need to with this stuff, and you'll see what I mean. Um, I paint it up over the, over the eyes. And what that does is it connects in between the eyes and... Um, and the base here, you can see it's kind of glued in. And when you cure that with your light, that makes it really hard for this to move. I mean, this is not going to move now, ever. Um, and if you feel a little bit worried about it, you can always do a second coat, get, get a lot of that in there. Um, and that'll really make sure that that doesn't move. Um, and this works almost better than super glue. You can see that kind of almost welds those in. Okay, and that's not going to move. I mean, I'm sure a really, really big fish, powerful jaw might be able to move that, but should be good. And there we go. That is the craft fur Clouser minnow. Hope that helped. I don't know if any of you have had trouble with craft fur Clousers before. This one's a little different because of the extra long shank. Usually it would be a little shorter, um, but pretty much similar, almost the same thing. Definitely check out Risen. They make uh, hooks, they make rods and reels, great quality stuff. They are my sponsor, um, so it helps me sort of when you buy from them. I don't directly get paid for anything from you guys buying from them, but uh, it definitely helps keep them, um, you know, wanting to work with me. So definitely 
purchased some hooks from them. They're good quality hooks, um, especially their barbless series. Their barbless hooks are amazing. These are not barbless um, because the customer had requested barbed, but um, the barbless are great. Um, they're wonderful. Go check them out, www.risenfly.com. Use my discount code, by the way. I've got a discount code. It's McFly. You can type it in at checkout. It is a one-time code, but once you use that, then um, you can sign up for like a mailer from them, and they'll sometimes send uh, discounts or uh, deals or you know, 15% um, off or whatever it may be um, on other things, sometimes 10%, but um, mine is 15% off, so definitely use that and you'll be able to get 15% um, off on all the rods, or reels, or hooks, or whatever. Um, also, if you guys could, subscribe. Um, definitely helps me out. So if you like this kind of stuff, you like this video, um, subscribing to my channel helps me out. Um, also, hitting that like button helps me out. Um, it kind of basically the algorithms and how YouTube works is if, you know, you're commenting, if you're, if you're, um, so definitely comment too. If you're commenting, you're hitting the like button, you're subscribing, everyone's um, kind of, uh, these videos get, you know, get pushed a little more so they, you know, um, get viewed more. And so that helps me out. So definitely do that. Um, I also sell flies, so go check that out. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram. It's the best way. I just basically, I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, um, a, a website because I do custom ties. So basically it would be impossible to put every fly in the world on there. Um, but I definitely, I can tie flies. Um, I've tried to keep the prices as good as possible, about as close to like a fly shop as possible. But I use higher quality hooks, higher quality materials, um, and I take my time and really make sure that these are good. Obviously, I cement the heads and make sure that they're durable. So uh, hit me up on Instagram is probably the best spot. You can hit me up on Facebook. Let me know here if you want it, um, and I'll, I'll try to fit in. If you don't have Instagram, um, I'll try to figure out a way for us to contact. All I need basically is your email. And then I can set you, send you a um, invoice after we figure out what you want. Um, but all the prices I keep the same. I keep them written down for each fly that I've ever tied. So I'm not like you know I'm not changing prices or anything um, too often. <laughs> I mean, um, if like certain material goes up or whatever, I might have to. But um, but it's not like it's okay for this person. I'm selling at this price or this person. I'm selling that price. No, I, I keep the prices all the same. Um, but uh, I try to keep them like I said as good as possible. Um, but I'll send an invoice and you guys pay it and then it, I ship it off to you. Um, so it's easy. You know, no contact, you know, contact less delivery basically. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.